Hey everyone, this is Chris Ashley. Welcome back. It's really great to be with you. I, I've missed you all and I'm really excited to dive into it today. So today I wanted to cover a topic that I've noticed a lot of people ask me, and that is how do we cope with the idea that we create our own reality? But first, really small plug. Hi, I'm Chris. When I was younger, I went through trauma that caused me to feel broken and lost. But my life changed after I had a spiritual awakening. Since then, I've dedicated my life to studying and learning from masters all around the world that have helped me to create a life of fulfillment and abundance beyond my wildest dreams. Now I'm dedicated to sharing everything I've learned so that you don't have to suffer for decades like I did. I've seen people's lives completely transform, and I share it all right here. If you head over to changeyourmindtochangeyourreality.com, sign up for my newsletter. I will send you a free guide that's going to help you manifest your dream life. And this is a tool that I use with my private coaching clients. I've used it with them for years with amazing results. I've seen people manifest their life, the life of their dreams using this. So please head over and do that. And then also my book, Change Your Mind to Change Your Reality, is going to be out June 20th. It'll be available for pre-order before that. So stay tuned. Follow me on TikTok, Instagram. I'm at Change Your Mind with Chris. I'm Change Your Mind with Chris Ashley on Facebook. I'm all over. So podcast, YouTube, you know it. All right. So sometimes when people hear that we create our own reality, that's a really tough pill for them to swallow because they look around at the world and they say, but there's all these violent crimes like rape and murder. There's genocide there's all these wars in history and you know there's there's government control there's sexism there's racism they look at their own life and the traumas that they've gone through they look at their ancestral line and the traumas their ancestors have gone through um, but here's the thing every family tree has a story and every single person has a story my own family uh I, I, I don't even know, so many relatives were slaughtered at the Holocaust. Um, my father's side of the family is Jewish. So, you know, everyone has a story. But we are all spiritual beings, right? We've forgotten our true nature. We are powerful beings from the stars. And we have dropped into this illusion, right? This veil, this illusion has come down over our eyes and we, we've forgotten that all of this isn't real. Like we've bought into the illusion. We think that everything that's happening to us is real. And we think that we are a body and we are our minds because we identify with our ego. And that's what ego thinks, right? When really we are a vast spiritual being and only like 10% of our real soul, our real self, is incarnated as a human. The rest of it sits on the other side of the veil as our higher self because our true our true being has so much energy that it couldn't possibly squeeze into a human form. It would literally destroy the human body. So that's kind of that's kind of the first idea behind it, right? And we are living in a play, a school, a simulation um a game, right? And everything that you see around you is part of the setting for all of that, right? Um, it's like the stage set of a play or the setting of a movie. And you actually determine what happens to you before you incarnate. You meet with your spirit guides and together you decide, these are the lessons that we need. I need to learn in my next lifetime based on maybe what you didn't learn in your last time or maybe what you did and you're ready for the next step up. And once you have those lessons decided, you and your spirit guides plan out situations and circumstances in your life that are going to help you best learn those lessons. So it's the way you're born. It's who your parents are. It's what race or nationality you are, what, what continent you live on, what country you live in, and also some really big life circumstances that are going to happen to you and the way you die, because all of those things give you the opportunity to grow. 
right? They, they ready the soil, they plant the seeds. And then it's up to you if when you go through those things, when you deal with those things, if you actually grow, because you always have a choice, right? You can either go deeper into illusion and into sleep, or you can become more awakened, more enlightened. You can use opportunities to grow and expand and to level up even more. So in, in Hinduism, they call the world Maya, which means illusion. And Maya, I'm going to just read this quote because it's great. It's by ISKCON Education Services. Um, Maya is the empirical reality that entangles consciousness. Maya has the power to create a bondage to the empirical world, preventing the unveiling of the true unitary self, the cosmic spirit. Under Maya's influence, the soul mistakenly identifies with the body. He accepts such thoughts as I am white and I am a man, or this is my house, my country, and my religion. Thus, the illusioned soul identifies with the temporary body and everything connected to it, such as race, gender, family, nation, bank balance, and sectarian religion. So that just sums it up so beautifully. We get so attached to this illusion, but our bodies are just our avatars, right? It's like you've been dropped into a video game world and you chose what your avatar looks like, right? And you chose all these circumstances and we get so attached to it that we, we appoint ourselves the judge and we start um, blaming others and we appoint ourselves the victim as well, right? And we get sucked into this cycle of fear. Now, if you wanna get off the wheel of karma, there's two things that you need to do in life. One, you need to forgive people. And two, you need to stop letting fear get to you. You can't let yourself be afraid. Do things afraid. Don't get sucked into what the media is telling you, what, what your own ego is telling you, right? Because fear is part of the illusion. And fear isn't real. The only thing that's real is love. And what's all-encompassing can't really have an opposite, right? So fear isn't even the the uh, opposite of love. Fear just doesn't exist. Now, we can get so comfortable with suffering that it makes us feel safe. And I'm sure that you can think about the people that you know, and you probably know someone that feels really comfortable being the victim and really comfortable with suffering. And we, we, we get so attached to it. But like, here's the thing. You are pure love and you come from source and there is no judgment there. It is pure, unconditional love and creative energy. There are so many people who have had near-death experiences who have crossed the veil and come back and said that they weren't judged for a single thing they did during their lifetime. It was all just pure, unconditional love and understanding. It's this parent love, right? That their child could do no wrong. That's how source feels or God, or life force energy, or whatever you want to call it. Now, you can look out into the world and find a million excuses, a million reasons to be angry, and you could find something because there's always things out there that will trigger you, right? That can make you angry, make you want to fight. But you always have a choice. Now, I've also heard ego say things like, it's easy to believe all of this from a place of privilege. But Here's the thing, there is no one race, nationality, group of people, social class, anything like that, that is more powerful or less powerful. Okay, we are on an even playing field. Everyone has the power to manifest their dream life. There is no one group of people that can manifest better. It's just what these people have been taught, right? And lucky for you, you're watching this video and you're probably watching other videos like it from other teachers saying the same thing, right? You are a powerful creator. Now, quantum physics, as well as a multitude of cultures all around the world, tell us that we are all connected and that we are all one. And there's this invisible energy field. And what one person does on one side of the planet deeply affects what someone else on the other side of it does. And this is called entanglement in quantum physics. And this field is called everything from the great hologram to the cosmic canvas coined by Greg Braden, um, the quantum field, the quantum field of consciousness, and there's many other names for it. But reality is like a hologram where 
we are all projecting onto this canvas, this realm, this, um, this field, right? Humanity together is projecting onto it. And then we get shown back to us in real time, in the real world, what we're all thinking and feeling. So rather than attacking others and thinking it's us versus them and judging other people and blaming other people for your problems and playing the victim, if we could instead project peace and love and compassion and empathy and kindness, we will see that reflected in the world around us. But if you're thinking things like us versus them, you're gonna help call that paradigm into existence. So we all have the ability to change our thoughts and beliefs, right? We have the capacity to change our own reality. We are all powerful creators. And my hope is that these videos and my courses and my book help to help you to step into your own power. I'm here to help humanity. I'm here to serve humanity because we need to rise in our level of consciousness, right? We need to help humanity ascend to the next level. Now, the best way to know if any of this works is to try it, right? Just try what I'm saying instead of judging it, instead of, you know, getting triggered or emotionally reacting, give it a try, like truly give it a try and you're going to prove it to yourself, right? It's about not just believing what other people tell you, but actually try things and see if they work for you. Make up your own mind about things. And, you know, a lot of times because of fear, we kind of don't want to try new things, right? Or we think we're the cynic or we think we're the realist. But these are all these are all names for ego, too, right? So I played puppy in the background. Ego is the voice of the realist, the cynic. Yeah. Um, that voice that tries to convince you that you can't have all of these things, that you're not powerful, that you're just a body and you're just a mind. Now, if you can imagine another reality, it exists. And there are countless realities going on all the time. Just look at any two opposing groups in the world, both adamantly insisting their way is the right way and everyone else's way is wrong. And there can even be next door neighbors who seem to live in different realities. So if you can think it, feel it, align yourself with it, vibrate at that frequency, see yourself living inside that life, then that reality will become yours. There's not a doubt to it. That is how the universe that we live in, work, live in works. And it's alchemy, really. You're, you're transforming darkness into light, sadness into joy, uh, disease, dis-ease into health. And it all comes from you. I'm just checking my notes because I don't want to miss anything here. So, you know, if you decide to look around and see a pained, sick, tormented world, then by thinking that you are going to make it so. Whatever you get emotional about, the universe sends you more of because your emotions is how you manifest, how you use the law of attraction. So it, it's kind of like the Facebook algorithm. If, if you're getting emotional about something, if you're giving your attention, the universe is like, oh, you like this? You want more of it? Like, cool, I'll send you that. But you have to flip the way that you think about things. The outside world isn't happening regardless of what happens with you. The outside world is a projection of you. It's like a movie that you are projecting in real time. Okay. It's like that. Does a tree fall? Does if a tree falls in the woods and no one hears it, does it really fall? Question, right? You are creating your reality by observing and quantum physics has so many experiments that prove this to be true. So at the end of the day, you get to make a choice about what you look at. You know, you can, you can look at things that make you feel angry. You can look at things that make you feel like a victim. You can make, you can look at things that make you want to go out and fight, but the only way you're actually going to change the world is by changing yourself. So change yourself first and then offer others a hand to lift them up to your level. And don't look at things that don't align with the reality you want. If there is something in your area like 
I don't know, like a real estate crash or unemployment going on and the newspapers are saying it and they're saying it like all over and in casual conversation, you can simply affirm this does not affect me and you don't have to pay attention to any of that. Don't feed into a reality that you don't want to exist. And this isn't spiritual bypassing. It's you taking your life into your own hands. You are taking the power away from external forces and you are putting the power back into your own hands. So I hope you can feel empowered rather than defensive at the idea that you create your own reality. I'll see you next time. Don't forget to like this, share it, give it five stars. Thank you all so much. Have a beautiful day.